Allah accept our martyrs and cure our injured, console the petrified, and save our children. Um, I am the Sudan Revolution. So I'm going to talk to you today about um, two things. I'm going to present my vision for the ICT sector in Sudan. And basically, I'll tell you the conclusion now and then go through a scientific or research methodology of how I reached that conclusion. So um, knowledge is power, but in the ICT sector, value is power. So that's number one. Number two, um, we need a vision to follow. And in this platform, I will call all the ICT professionals to get in touch, collaborate, and work together to form a vision which we all uh, agree on and work together to implement. And that vision is based on values. And in the ICT sector, the value is socioeconomic development. As Prof. Bussin said, education, the three steps of it, the third step is nurturing, and nurturing is a value. So the, the value, you, you can't reach, the, you can't have an embodied vision where everyone follows if, you, if that vision doesn't contribute and doesn't um, reflect your values. So this is my conclusion sort of um, from this talk, and I'm going to show you how I reached it. So um, I've been in research for 10 years um, in, the, in the wireless communication area, and I'm now, I'm now back in the industry. So as part of my research, I asked myself the question, how can we improve the ICT status in Sudan? And to know where we are, we need to know where we're heading, we need to know where we are. So I looked at the world countries, and I collected uh, this set of data, sorry, um, economic, demographic, so GDP, GNI, demographic age group, percentage of urban population, the means of our schooling, development uh, indexes like HDI and um, efficiency measures and global competitive index, etc. So I collected this for the whole world countries, 188 country, and some, did some data analysis using machine learning methods. And the idea is to come up with a cluster of similar countries to Sudan in socioeconomic development measures. I can't compare Sudan ICT status to the UK because we're totally different. So I have to compare it to a set of countries that share similar economic and social developmental attributes. Um, I came up with a cluster uh, of 18 countries where Sudan sits. Then I went ahead and collected additional 12 commercial, financial, technological indicators for ICT. Um, and I, this is for the tech guys. This is the process. Um, data mining, uh, exploratory data analysis, feature transformation. You need to be um, accurate. You need to do cluster validation, stuff like that. Um, and this is the result. So um, the table shows five measures. Um, smartphone adoption is number one, sorry. Um, so on that measure, we do quite well. Uh, compared to the average in our cluster, we are around 30% smartphone adoption. Um, there's a measure called um, the data revenue, how much percentage of revenue is coming from data. So we're doing good. So color coding, as you already guessed, green is good, bad is red, and uh, orange is not bad. Um, so we, we're doing well in those two, but we need to ask ourselves the question, are these contributing to socioeconomic development of the country? Um, we're doing very bad in the same index, which essentially means each person will have one point five eight SIM cards, so they're using two different companies. That effectively means the companies offering are not sufficient. There is no customer experience, there is no quality assurance, there is no service level agreements uh, for those offerings. So if you buy an internet package, there is no, there is no predefined quality of service for you. Um, and this is an issue. Um, 
The average revenue per user is, is all right, but it's declining and due to economic reasons, inflation, etc. cetera. Um, there is something called HHI, which is an index of uh, measuring uh, market competitiveness. Uh, the lower the better, so we sit in a highly concentrated market, which means there is no competition. Everyone is holding their quarters and staying, do, uh, so that they're doing fixed, they're doing mobile, everyone is happy. But the, the, conclu the, the benefits to the people is not there. So um, the, the regulator role is there to, to encourage competition. Um, a big issue for the telecom sector in Sudan is, is this, the uh, average revenue per user, which is, quite, is, is declining. And this is mainly because the regulator, unfortunately, policy is to collect tax from the companies. And that's it, it's a tax collection agency, to be frank. And, and there is no socioeconomic driven policies from the ICT. And um, that's what I'm going to talk about next. Um, this is pretty much the previous slide. It just shows there is opportunities in Sudan for uh, innovation because around 40-something percent of the sites are off the grid. So we have opportunities to develop solar power technologies and lead the world in that area if we unite around the vision. Um, the investment in ICT is, is, is quite... Um, is quite l low, 7%, that's in 2011. But the contribution that measured in 2011 to the economic growth was 1.6%. Um, mobile, people talk about mobile, and some people see that, say that Sudan is doing very well in mobile, we're leading Africa, East Africa, the Horn of East Africa. But the statistics are a bit different. So if you look, you can see that we are doing very well in uh, mobile serial subscription, the red curve, and, uh, and, but unfortunately the two, the green and the blue are the fixed broadband, which is fixed broadband through cable, and uh, fixed land line are dead effectively since 2008. So um, this begs the question, is a mobile only strategy enough for a country? We are effectively running uh, whole country or, or mobile networks? And the answer is, it depends. So it de if, if you have subscriber mobility, where your, your solutions um, are inclusive, you, you have coverage KPIs, you have accessibility KPIs, you make sure that everyone can access the service no matter where, then maybe. The, the, the only technological solution to this is to is what people say 5G is going to be the new thing and it's going to, it's, it's to, going to solve all the problems, but even that is debatable. So a mobile-only strategy is a delusion, and we're deluded to the fact that we're doing well in ICT because we're doing well in mobile, but the, f the matter of the fact is we are focused on one aspect, uh, <clears throat> and it's, it's, ICT is not, one, it's not a one-size-fits-all. You have to have different modes of connectivity and solutions. And this is basically solid, solidifies what I said. So if you look at the mobile connection penetration and the actual unique subscriber penetration in the mobile um, internet in Sudan, we are just below the average in our cluster. Well, 60%, 60 percent, 60 something percent, the average is around 85. And in, if you look at the unique, how much unique sub subscribers are there, we are, again, below the average. And this is because of that SIM index I showed you earlier. So effectively, the number of subscribers are shown higher than they actually are because it's the same person having two different SIMs. Um, ICT centers and powers in Sudan. Prof. Uh, Sadiq mentioned the African International Center. So I listed all the ICT centers in Sudan, um, and in terms of their power and their contribution to the ICT status, is pretty much non-existent. Um, the reason is, we all know, I guess. Um, so if you look at the first eight, 
NTC, the National Telecommunication Corporation, the regulator, Sudatel, Zen Sudan, Nile Research Center, African International Center, Information Security Center, that effectively led by government employees who have no clue why ICT should be there. ICT is there to derive, to be an enabler for socioeconomic development. It's, it's not there as a, as a, as a as uh, selling airwaves to companies so that the, the regulator can collect taxes. So they totally misunderstand that. Um, the MTN and Kana, um, I can't claim that they're led by um, uh, members of the NCC, but uh, there's various attempts to subdue the cable, infra the fiber infrastructure in Sudan. Is Kana trying to do that? But um, whatever is happening is not it is not to support uh, uh, coverage or accessibility to the people. It's there just to collect tax effectively. Um, so my vision, um, I th before I say it, I just summarize the good and the bad. So if you look at the good, uh, the ICT sector in Sudan is doing good, oh, five minutes, in, in financial KPIs. Anything finance, we're doing good on, well, makes sense. But we're not doing great on any population coverage stats or mobile uh, uh, KPIs. And um, we have no quality assurance or service levy agreement whatsoever. The whole ICT industry is built on service levy agreement. You sell something, you need to deliver that service at that quality. So the vision in a page. So the purpose is to foster a culture of technological innovation for a better Sudan. We need to agree on that. Uh, the vision is to build a society that embraces knowledge and effectively develop ICT-enabled socio-economic economic and human development. So ICT should develop the economy and social mobility in the society. Um, the goal to be uh, among the top 10 value-based. So again, the value is that knowledge is good, but if you have it, you're not producing products out of it. What are you doing? So, um, and these are the strategies I'm not going into the details because of time of how to achieve that vision and goal. So my call here is for the ICT professionals, let's talk about this. Uh, we have no time to waste. Um, summary. Um, I just, last night I looked at the NetBlocks website to see the impact of the internet, current internet shutdown on our socioeconomic situation in Sudan. And it's affecting us by $870 billion. This is what being taken out of everyone's pocket. Billion, billion. billion dollars. A million, sorry. So, um, and this, this just shows what I've just, uh, this solidifies what I just said before. So ICT is a socioeconomic development tool. It's not just um, talking on the phone and going on the internet and chatting and stuff like that. There is a lot of evidence and research. Uh, it's slightly different between developed and developed countries, and I've sh um, I will share some papers, uh, a paper I published on this, um, that supports this notion. So uh, we really need to have an ICT ecosystem that supports, that derives socioeconomic development. And one way of doing that is to have a vision and agree on it and working in implementing it. Um, and we, we need leadership. So I'm technically capable person. I'm, I might say that I have leadership skills, um, but it's not good talking about things and not really having the technical leadership to go and deliver them. So we need that technical leadership um, to unite around the vision and work hard to implement it. That's what we really need. We have qualified people all over the world, but we need somebody to unite everyone. Um, and I would like just to conclude by saying um, the, the, the value-based uh, vision I, I just presented is something that um, many people can find it um, very hard to achieve, but being in the field for some time now, I think we can do this. We can really, um, we, we have the technical capabilities. We just need to, to really sit together and, uh, and work as a team. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. And yeah, before I, I remember just to share the references. So that all the figures I showed here on this paper, I published in uh, one of uh, uh, Prof. Alam Journal's International Journal of Innovation and Knowledge Management. It's basically an ICT benchmark in, in Sudan. The data is collected between the two years 2005 and 2015 for 10 years. The rest is other papers. And I would like to thank these collaborators uh, from Zain Sudan, uh, Usama Muhammad Khair, Usama Ibrahim, and Marwan Aout. We work together to, to write this uh, paper. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take now is for uh, question. If you have any question. Uh, yes, you can. Yes. Just a question to um, Hassan Hamdoun. Uh, thank yes. you very much for all the speakers, first of all. Yeah. Um, you did say that the cost of the internet shutdown is $869 billion. Is that a daily figure, or how, or is it a cumulative one? So uh, NetBlocks is, um, is an organization that works on internet freedom. So they have a, a tool called COST, cost of internet shutdowns. They developed that tool in collaboration with um, the ITU and other organizations. And the tool effectively looks at uh, human development indexes and GDP and GNI and um, other economic and development figures uh, to estimate how much it costs from shutting the essential communication means in a country. So if you go to the website, you can put the days so that figure is for the whole duration. That's from the 3rd of June up to last night, up to actually today. I included today um, in, in the calculations. And it just shows, obviously, these are estimated values, but are based on a very robust methodology, a th uh, scientific methodology, and, and it's very um, it's striking to see that, I would say. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. Can I just make a comment, um, just to challenge again? Yeah, and the leadership in Sudan has been challenged with Tamkin. We have to yeah, be, come on, acknowledge the reality. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not based on abilities, or kafaat, or like it's been Tamkin for 30 years. Um, Recently, when I was talking about you know, not able to agree a government, it's not about being able, like an in inter, to be able to put your cards on a table, on a negotiating table. It's not that they believe in the negotiation process. It's not possible that people have to take a vision or to take the same leaders when they're not going to get shot after they leave the, the meeting. So there's issues about the safety, security, about how do we create an environment which is, actually which is actually conducive to good leadership. Exactly. Like, it's not about that we don't have enough leaders. Uh, and I believe the Sudanese have the leadership abilities, with team building abilities. Um, and yeah, and this has been shown in different domains. Yeah, you're um, right. So um, the, the, the Temkin and the, the nature of oppression is anti-leadership. Uh, yeah, you can't do, uh, you, you can't, just, that's not a conducive environment. But what I'm talking about is, at a local level, so you can you can lead a small team to do something. You you don't need to um, to really face risks in doing that. You can do that in your own company, or charity, or community organization, or whatever. But on that one, I agree. Now, this is question. If you have. I think I, I just want to um, give يعني, challenge you back. As, 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 a, as, a, as an engineer who most likely you do have the contact within the like you know recently developed professional bodies or what, whatever is going back in Sudan so I think your proposal is amazing but I'm sure like you know have you actually tried to propose this within your own societies and I I hope so yeah. and I did yeah I don't need to show you I've contacted people and and shared this with and and get feedback on that and edited it and um, refined it. I don't need to show that to, to, to show that there is people who have a common goal to achieve. So I, I think that the, your question is alluding to the fact that 
uh, our previous examples of leaders who are those who just go on with things. They don't share what they're trying to achieve, right? Am I right in that? No, I, no, no. I think the question is, like, I was just looking for the reassurance that you're actually getting the support you're looking for. Of course. Yes. yes. And so this is the important a, bit. Yeah. So um, if, if um, I, I, I have to admit that I have to go back and, and read quite a bit about leadership and how to do things in that space because I'm an engineer. Yeah? So, but does doesn't stop me learning and doesn't stop um, uh, me trying to embody those uh, leadership behaviors into what I'm doing. So... Um, so the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs>